Welcome to the Goalie Mindset Podcast. My name is Pete Fry, the Goalie Mindset Guy, and my purpose is to help goalies have a dominating goalie career. Pete Fry, the Goalie Mindset Guy, here with the Goalie Mindset Podcast. I'm super excited to have on here today. He's called the Hamburglar, Andrew Hammond, who had that amazing run with Ottawa, led them all the way uh, through through the playoffs there, played 67 games in the National Hockey League, and 67, basically a lot of them were spectacular performances, had a long pro career, a fantastic college career, and some adversity in junior that we're, we're going to talk about as well, too. And I'm, I'm so excited you came on, Andrew. I really, really appreciate it. I know that goalies are excited to hear from you and are going to learn a lot from you. It's great for the listeners. Thanks for coming on, my friend. Yeah, no, I'm happy to, to be a part of this. And I've always seen your clips, I guess, throughout my career. And I think there's a lot of valuable lessons. And um, overall, I think I have one of the more unique careers. So I think I can probably... Uh, relate to a lot of goalies in different positions. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a few questions. Now, some people might call you a little bit of a late bloomer. You played junior B as a 17-year-old, correct? Yeah, no, I did. Yeah. Um, Grandview Steelers, and that's kind of, um, I mean, part of the story, but I'll, I'll let you continue and dive in a little bit deeper. Yeah. So, so here's a question. Here's a question from the time you were playing junior B as a 17 year old to this moment here, what changed? I'm going to, I'm going to play this moment here for you. Here it is. Empty netter. Mark Borvietsky is going to grab that game puck and give it to Hammond who records his first career win. 4-2 is the final. Now Montreal, they have just. So you're, I don't know if that was your first NHL. I think, was that your first NHL game that you got your first W? Uh, my first start. Your I first played, start. Uh, your first Half a game the year prior, and then a little over a period uh, the game before that. Got it. And then there's there's this moment here. There's this moment here. We got, we got to play as well, too. And the horn sounds. Andrew Hammond has his first ever NHL shutout, a 25 save performance. And the Ottawa Senators come into Honda Center tonight and defeat the Ducks by a final score of three to nothing. Three NHL starts for Hammond and three wins. Three NHL starts, three wins at that time. What changed from the time you were 17 years old playing junior B for I think it was the Grandview Steelers? In, in Vancouver area, Vancouver, British Columbia, what changed from, from that time to playing, playing three NHL games and, and three NHL wins? Well, when I was 17, I started to, I guess, what I would call momentum in my career. I started playing well, and um, it's a little bit easier to envision climbing the ladder at that point, where you when you're, you're playing well at a lower level, it's easier to kind of climb up. There's different options in junior A. Um, but... After that season, I kind of went through a process where I wanted to play junior A. I felt like it was a critical year at 18. And I got offered, a, at the time it was called a card, with the West Side Warriors, who are now the West Kelowna Warriors. And I had my other option at the time was to go to Victoria. And basically, there was three goalies that were going to be in a competition. I was one of them. Um, but I chose, I guess, the path of least resistance, which was the guaranteed card with West Side. Not knowing a lot about the organization, um, I hopped in and ultimately it was a place that I was never really comfortable. And I battled a lot of, um, I guess, mental issues in the sense of at that point, I was wor I, I got in my own head that I was worrying that what if hockey didn't work out? And, and my goal at that point was to get a scholarship. And um, I faced this constant battle of at that point at 18, all of your friends are going to college or university or trade school or whatever. And I felt like, well, you know what? I'm going to be the backup this year in, in West Side. Uh, maybe next year I'll be the starter, but then I'm looking at going to college at 20. And at that point in my life, that felt like uh, I was getting such a late start in life if hockey didn't work out. And the National Hockey League was, wasn't on my radar then. It was trying to be a means to, to get a scholarship, get an education paid for. Um, and so after I think I played one game, my first junior A game, 
I let in, I think, four goals on 17 shots or something and was pulled very early in the second period. And I went through a couple more practices and I decided, you know what, this this isn't for me. I'm going to hang them up and I'm going to go home and go to community college, get some schooling done. Um, and I did. And fortunately for me, my old junior B team called me again and just asked me to come play and have fun. I mean, community college isn't a full-time thing. You have time on the side. I had a part-time job that I was doing to help pay for some stuff, but um, that kind of led me back into finding the love of the game again. And that's what was most important for me. Wow. So you had actually basically quit the game. Yeah. For two or three weeks, I was getting ready to get ready to enroll come January at uh, in university and college and start with that part of my life. Can I ask you this? What did the coach say to you when he pulled you after the four saves not made there in Kelowna? Um, I don't remember him saying very much. Um, it's It was one of those things that ultimately now I can look back with pretty good clarity. I could have played better, um, but at the same time, it was uh, a bad situation. I apologize if you hear my daughter in the background. It's all good. Um, it's supposed to be done time now. We can barely hear. Okay. Um, but I, I don't remember him saying very much, but it, it's one of those things that I think if if you're not fully committed, that's really that's what makes it hard to play. You have to truly feel it in your heart and your mind. Um, and I wasn't at that point. And I think at times it's almost good to take one step back to take two steps forward. And for me, I'm most grateful that I was able to get another opportunity. And that's what led me to today where um, I got uh, one full-time job in particular. And uh, the story is, is I was basically working construction one summer and uh, in Vancouver in, in white rock or, where were you yeah, working? Yeah, so I was installing irrigation systems for, uh, I guess it's commercial irrigation, and all I would do all day is dig trenches so that they could the the senior people on my crew could basically lay the irrigation pipes in, and I was making good money at the time for what it for being 18, 19 years old. But um, I kind of had a little bit of an epiphany on a coffee break when I kind of looked around, and I'm a firm believer now. You kind of are who you associate yourself with. And yes. uh, it's, I, I kind of could see a little window into the future of, of what my life may look like if I didn't make some better decisions. So um, I kind of realized that my, my best path away from that would be to pursue hockey. And I, I think also that I, I, there would be regret if I wouldn't have. Um, I always felt like I was talented at times I felt like maybe I was uh, given the short end of stick at times, but I learned that ultimately you can only control really what you can control. And um, I wanted to see things through. So, so what changed from the time that you were kind of half in half out to the time when you quote unquote burnt the ship, so to speak, like the whole when when you're just like, I'm now all in what, what, what had changed? Um, partly the opportunity I was given. Um, when I did end up playing as my 18 year old year in junior B, I, I played really well. Um, probably partly because I was playing with a little bit of freedom now. Um, at that point I was still kind of, maybe I'll go to school next year, but I was in, in it was a learning lesson for me that, um, if you can kind of clear your mind of the pressure and trying to worrying about, oh, am I going to is a scout going to watch me in this game or is this, and just focusing on playing well and having fun um, that helped. But ultimately it's that my hometown team, the Surrey Eagles came calling and not only did they come calling, they wanted me to be the the starting goalie the following year. So for me, it felt like as a kid that went to BCHL games from basically eight years old through to 16 years old and going to see the Surrey Eagles that it, it felt like kind of like a, a sign that maybe I should uh, see this thing through and at least try. And who was, who was the coaching staff at Surrey at the time? It was Shane Cuss. So Shane Cuss had okay. gone from junior B to junior A and I had played against him quite a bit. So I think that was kind of the main reason why he gave me the opportunity. Um, There's a good player. 
He was a good player. Yeah, absolutely. He has a lot of records. Um, I, I played well at times, but unfortunately it wasn't really working out. And I think I still was never past that one bridge of worrying about uh, playing hockey as an overager and having nothing to show for it. And um, I ended up getting traded that January to, to Verdon and that ended up being the best thing for me. So you struggled in Surrey when you went to Surrey and you made the jump from junior B to junior A. Sounds like you might've struggled a little bit. Um, being candid, I don't know if I, I struggled that much. I don't know if we were that good of a team, but the, okay, okay, got the, it, got the, it. the results weren't necessarily incredible, but yeah. um, we were a team that, that gave up quite a bit of, of shots and things like that. But Ultimately, what kind of was uh, the the final straw was that there was a goalie from the Western Hockey League that Shane was pretty familiar with that had been released and they picked him up. And so it was more that I fell out of favor than anything else. Yes. Okay. Who was that goaltender? I mean, Tartaglioni. Okay. Okay. Got it. So from there, you go to, was it Vernon you went to? Yeah. And who was there? Was that Troy Mick and Vernon or who was that in, in Vernon that was coaching or the GM? That was Mark Ferner. Or so, Mark Ferner. Okay. I played against Mark in the Western Hockey League. He played for Kamloops. Yeah. Yeah, he was, so he was a good, I, good player. Yeah, and I mean, I got traded at the deadline um, then, and I I don't remember playing a ton then, and I think I played a little bit in the playoffs, but um, that summer was probably the most important summer of my life as far as um, being where I am today and being able to have had the career I've had because – I uh, I basically wholeheartedly committed myself to being the best goalie I could. And you want to talk about eating, sleeping, whatever it takes to be a goaltender and trying to find whatever edge you can. Uh, that's what I did that summer. And um, what what flipped in your mind to to help you or make you or help you decide to do that? Like what what flipped in your mind? Well, I'm. I'm the type of person that uh, I guess you could call a procrastinator. And I was, uh, I was back, backed into a corner. It's, it's, it's my last chance. Okay. So, so, so the whole burning the ships, I, this I, is it. I think, I think the best way to describe it is, is my fear kicked in and that it, it's basically time to, to make it or break it. And either you will be living your fear or you can do something about it. And I obviously chose to do something about it. And um, the one thing from that year that I really remember is that we had very high goals as a team to not only win the BCHL, but win the Royal Bank Cup. And my personal concern was getting a scholarship. But the number one thing that I think was most successful for me is that I was able to put myself in a position mentally where I wasn't focused on getting the scholarship as much as I was focused on having the team have success. And I thought if if the team wins the BCHL championship and I'm the goalie or they win the RBC, the rest will take care of itself. And it allowed me to compartmentalize the day-to-day -day stuff a lot more. Um, and it was, it, it all started to happen. And from that point, once I got the scholarship, I felt like I played even better. Um, but I do think just having my focus being on the team play well was was super helpful for me. Got it. Okay. And then, so after that year, you, you went right into college. Yep. What's the biggest advice you would give to the listeners as far as transitioning from junior A to college and Bowling Green, Bowling Green, correct? Yep. Yeah. What, what, what a great school. So I don't know if I'm the best person to give advice on transitioning levels because, <laughs> um, <laughs> Junior B to junior A, I got pulled in my first game. And then uh, from junior to college, I lost my first game. But I also didn't win a game in regulation my whole freshman year. But to oh, add on oh. to that, from college okay. to the second league, I didn't win my first game either. I also was pulled in that game. Let, let, let me let me, let me me stop you there for a sec then. So so as far as the whole, when you said junior B to junior A, was there, would you do anything different mentally if you could go back or, or from, from junior A to college, would you do anything differently if you could go back there or was it more circumstantial? I, I would do things different. I think now I've gone through and I'm a firm believer that you almost learn more from your losses than you do your wins at times. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think a lot of people look at uh, bad games or giving up bad goals as failures, but um, it's really an opportunity to learn about what works and what doesn't work. And for me, it was, was it added pressure I was putting on myself? Was it treating it differently than I did? I mean, I played the game at that point for 15, 20 years already. Like nothing really has changed. It's the same game. It's just different players on the ice. Um, and so I think now if I could go back and this is what I learned later in my career, and I'm glad that I ended up learning the lesson is you've earned the opportunity to be where you are and no one knows the work that you've put in. And so there's a freedom that you have to find in your game. And I think you see this at times with goalies who maybe they start their first few NHL games and they play really, really well. And then they kind of come back to uh, the level they were expected to play at. And it's when you can embrace the, the trying to think of the best way to say it, when you can embrace all of the hard work that you've put in and then you can just play and realize that you've earned the right to be there, it's freeing mentally, physically, everything. And you find yourself making saves that maybe you didn't make before, but everything just clicks and you're in that kind of top 5% of the, the it, I always think that it's, it's goalies in the NHL. It's everyone's pretty good, but there's some guys that are really good at being bad. And so the guys that come up and play really well, that are playing above their head. They're just playing free, but the guys that are really good for a long time, like carry price and stuff, their bad's really good. And that's just who they are. They've figured it out permanently. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good point. How, how was your transition then after college to the, the American Hockey League was the next step right after college. Was it the, was the yeah. NHL? Yeah. How was that transition? Like, like had, had the transitions of leagues gotten better for you by that time? How were your first few games in the A? My first game in the American League was more of a situational issue, I think. We had uh, three five-on-three power plays against us in the first period. Uh, was pulled after four, so... Uh, Lots of uncontrollables, it sounds period. like. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to play any game where you have... yeah bunch of five on threes, uh, let alone the first period. Um, but it was a battle. My first two months, it was a struggle. Um, should I have gone down a level? Maybe, but, um, you didn't, you, you didn't play one game on the coast, right? You were no, the whole time. Yeah. And I think, I think it's probably a testament to, to hard work. It's the, the people around the team could see how hard I was working and, when you keep banging on a door for so long, it's going to break down. And that's kind of the approach I took. Um, often it wasn't overnight, but it, it, I would say it probably took me the first two months of that season to really find myself at that level and understand how good players are and um, how different it is. But that's working every day and, and trying to just pick up one thing a day, just trying to – I'm a big believer in, in in trying to just find little small things that can, once you stack them up, it, it turns into a big victory. Yes, yes. Now, you had gotten great at transitioning by the time you played your first NHL game because those were, you had successes right off the bat. So obviously you, you would you would learn from those experiences from, from uh, junior B to junior A, from junior A to college, college to A, and then A to the NHL. Tell, tell us about that. Tell us about that. Well, I think you have to rely on like my experience playing that first, my first start was that I had been there for probably two and a half weeks practicing every day with the team. And I worked my butt off every day and I, I left no doubt in my mind that I was ready. Um, before the game, I mean, I only got the ch a chance because of an injury, but I knew that I wasn't going to leave anything to chance. And I didn't know if I was going to get an opportunity, but I knew if I did, I'd be ready. And so ultimately when that time came, um, I was able to be 100% dialed in and put myself in the best position I could um, by being prepared. And that for me throughout my entire pro career, especially is uh, if, 
anyone listening wants a shortcut is if you want confidence, be prepared. And that's the simplest way. If, if, if you're not prepared, you're going to know it in your heart and it's going to be tough to, to fake it. But, um, if you're prepared, it's going to, going to bleed confidence in all parts of your game. Put in the work, right? Put in the work, put in the work, put in the work. Outstanding. Now, now tell us about the whole, the whole hamburger thing. Like, didn't you eat a hamburger on the ice after a game when was like thrown on the ice? Um, I picked one up. I didn't eat it though. Oh, okay. Oh, you didn't eat it. Okay. I, I, you know, things rumors spread. I heard you ate it, but (laughs) Curtis Lazar took a bite out of one of them. There was a couple (laughs) of them he took a bite, but, um, I mean, a lot of those cheeseburgers were being smuggled in for three hours and someone's. Yeah. 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 Well, they're McDonald's. They would last for probably 30 years. Yeah, (laughs) it's true. But I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't feel like that right after the game. So no, that'd be gross. I hear you. I hear you. What? Okay. So, so, so obviously work effort is a big part of your success, but that, that, that's, that's, that's been a huge part. What, what about dealing with, like, did you ever have to deal with like negative, say coaches saying stuff that, you know, can, I've, I've heard it a lot, you know, throwing goalies off mentally. Have you ever had to deal with that? And and if so, how did you, how did you deal with that? Um, as far as negativity, I, I would say that my first year of college is when I really took a big jump with that. Um, and I sought help. We had a, a, a sports psychologist with the team and it's the number one thing that I took throughout my career um, that helped to keep me focused. And I mean, my, my first year, I mentioned that we, I, I personally, I, I played 16 games my freshman year. I went 0 14 2. So it, we were a, a team who, after I committed for a scholarship, the next day they announced they're getting rid of the program. So it wasn't a place I was going to at the time that was in a great spot. So mm-hmm. we were expected to finish dead last. It wasn't a ton of fun. And there was a lot of negativity around the team. But ultimately, I had a job to do and I battled the negativity a little bit. Um, And one of the tools that I learned is um, basically almost to a point where I'd become OCD about it, but I I would throughout a game, I would constantly be saying next shot, next save, next stop in my head and reinforcing positive imagery, positive thoughts. And whether it was a, a goal against a save, it was always about what was coming next and just repetitive in my head, next shot, next save, next stop it wouldn't allow bad things to creep into my head. It was constant. I I was basically overflowing my brain with positivity, which allowed me to stay focused on what was important, which was the next shot and the next save and ultimately the next stop. Got it. Got it. Okay. That, yeah, that, that is just the the whole, we walk into the picture we hold of ourselves. Yep. It sounds like you nailed it. You nailed it. Next stop, next save, next stop, next save. Yes. Pascal Valana was, was a big influence on you as, as a goalie coach. What's the biggest thing that you learned from working with Pascal? Um, the biggest thing that I would say is if anyone knows Pascal, they know his passion. And he was a big part of when I kind of wanted to commit myself is understanding I, I think people think that they work hard and then they find out that um, there's other people working harder. And I think having a, almost a wider lens view versus a narrow focus uh, is something I learned from him. And you can, I guess another analogy would be a uh, big fish in a little pond type thing. And so I never, I think we did a good job of, of creating a game plan for my game laying out steps, laying out a game plan of how do you want to play situations? How, how do you want to, what kind of teammate do you want to be? And I think all of those things you can accomplish at once. If you have an idea of, of, of who you want to be and it's defining what kind of a goalie you want to be. And for me, I prided myself on being a good teammate, not being the guy who you let in a goal and you're staring, staring down your defenseman type thing. And, um, I would say his his passion and understanding that um, you need to maximize your talent while also 
being a good teammate is probably the biggest thing outside of getting too technical and stuff like that. But, yeah. um, and, and his passion bleeds passion. If you talk to him, you will leave fired up. Oh yeah. So probably the biggest thing too. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. He, he's a super guy, super. I've known Pasco for a long time. And then Sean Murray, he was also a big influence on you as well too. What's the biggest thing you, you took from working with Sean? With Sean, I would say it was early on in my career, um, creating a belief in myself that I could be who I want to be. Um, there's obviously the technical side of things. It's one thing, but um, if a player doesn't believe in themselves and it's tough for a coach to create that, it's tough the higher level you get because it turns into uh, a marketplace more or less. Um, so you have to learn how to create your own confidence. And I think Sean helped me develop that. Um, I think the way that he structured his goalie schools was great for me because it brought guys together who you're constantly competing with one another. And I said, you are who you surround yourself with before. And I think that's one of the best things Sean does is bring, uh, really good goalies together who you can compete with and you can see kind of how you stack up. Um, and ultimately uh, they're measuring sticks for yourself, but there's a lot of other measuring sticks out there, but trying, trying to really hone in on being the best of, of your area first, and then worrying about what comes next after that. Outstanding. Outstanding. I'm going to open it up for, for three questions here, just because we're running out of time. Three quick questions. Uh, Kyle Hagan, Kyle plays in the queue. Kyle, what's a question you have for Andrew? Can you come back to me? I was trying. I was trying to think of one actually. Okay, okay. He's thinking of one. Let's go to Andrew. Andrew Knox. What's a question you have for Andrew Hammond? All right. So uh, back to like when you were playing college and juniors. Uh, what was your college recruiting like uh, when you were playing juniors, and how did you not let it affect your mind during games when you know there's coaches watching you? Um. My college recruiting was difficult in not allowing it to affect my mind, but ultimately once I adapted the adopted the mindset of focusing on the team have success in, I should also mention that it, it does get difficult when you see players around you getting scholarships or other goalies in the league getting scholarship and you think, Oh, I'm better than him. But for me, the only way I ever had success was, once I committed to the team having success, um, the rest will kind of take care of itself. The recruiting part is difficult because oftentimes you'll get approached by a school after a game and you'll think, oh, wow, I'm going to go to this school. You look them up on your computer and, oh, this is going to be great. And you tell your mom and dad and you tell your friends, oh, I'm, if they offer me, I'm going to go there. And then next thing you know, you don't hear from them ever again and you don't really know why. Um, but it can be difficult, but... I think understand the one, the one recommendation I would have too is understanding the situation of where the school is at, as far as playing time, you don't want to go somewhere where there's, I, I mean, you always think you're going to be able to beat up people, but unfortunately the reality of college hockey is that if someone has played every game and played well the year prior, they're just going to get given that job the next year. So having a commitment from the team that, you're going to get an opportunity, whether it's uh, 10 games, 15 games, whatever it may be, just an opportunity to get your foot in the door, I think would be huge. Awesome. Good feedback. Yeah, I, a couple of goalies I work with now are having that same challenge. Exactly what, what you're saying there, Andrew. Yeah. Kyle, question for Andrew. Yeah, okay. So uh, even uh, say like when you were um, playing in the NHL or AHL or whatever, you were, um, I know you, you had to back up a couple of times. So I was kind of curious how you, how you found a positive mindset while you're, you didn't play as much games or how you stayed sharp and um, to, you know, perform in that next game you had. Um, there's kind of two ways I could go about it at times, or if, if I felt like I was deserving to play and I wasn't being given the opportunity, um, I would use it as motivation that I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I'm going to kind of have one of those games that proves that I deserve that net type thing. 
So I think harnessing it in the right, in the right way. And ultimately you can use it as motivation, but I'm going to be repetitive in this, that if you're not prepared for that opportunity, it's going to go wasted. Um, but if it was generally a, I'll say a normal season where you're kind of the number two type thing and you're just trying to stay ready. Um, for me, it was preparing every game as if you were going to play and doing all the right things. But at the same time, when you're playing 82 games, it becomes taxing mentally to prepare for every single one. And I think when you're the starter and then all of a sudden you're taking a game off, it's a little bit easier to take the game off because you're kind of in a routine. It's almost like you just go out and play and all that stuff. For a backup, it's a lot harder when you're not playing that often. So I think it's more about the physical demands and making sure that you're physically ready while also knowing when to kind of push it mentally and kind of take a step back. And I think also understanding kind of where each game is at. And if you can steal 10 minutes at the end of the third period where you think you might not be going in in order to kind of get ready for the, the next opportunity, because listen, it's your mind is, is a really, it's a muscle and it can get fatigued too. And trying to find ways, whether it's away from the rink or even at the rink to stay fresh is super important. Outstanding. Andrew, thanks a lot. We are actually out of time. We're out of time. Andrew, thanks a lot for, for coming on the podcast. This has been spectacular. Pete Fry, the goalie mindset guy. We've had Andrew Hammond on. Andrew had a spectacular National Hockey League career, a great run for the Ottawa Centers, and has given some fantastic feedback to the goaltenders, some advice for the goaltenders today. Andrew, any last like words of inspiration for the for the listeners? Um, I would say ultimately you can be who you want to be. It's it's up to you. Um I think I've seen uh Pete say before it's the the numbers on uh, the percentages of how many people make it to the National Hockey League, it doesn't apply to everyone because not everyone works as hard as uh, the top 5% or whatever it may be. I don't know the exact quote. Yes. But um, yeah. the other thing I would say too is that if you can just get a little bit better, there's uh, an analogy from uh, baseball that one, they play 162 games, one extra hit every week takes you from a 250, 250 hitter to a 300 hitter, which will get in the hall of fame. So it's the same thing in goaltending. If you can just get, get, uh, get one goal out of the way a week, you're going to be doing really, really well. So it adds up over a season. And um, ultimately, even if it's half a goal, a quarter of a goal that you're getting better a week, it's going to pay off over the time of the season. That's huge. Just like making that one extra save. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Outstanding. Andrew, thanks a lot, my friend. This has been powerful, powerful to have you on. Thanks very yeah, thank much. You.